We need to talk. Intel recently launched a lineup of GPUs called the Intel XE GPU. And I have to admit, after using a few of these laptops in past videos, I was pleasantly surprised that even the integrated graphics in these was able to edit my videos. But because of that fact, I went down a rabbit hole of research. And I even reached out to Intel, who offered to help me make this video. I needed to know what was so special about these Intel XE GPUs, and furthermore, if they were in some way Intel's answer to the new Apple M1 chipsets. We'll get to that a bit later. For now, in this Decoder episode, my explainer series here on the channel, let's talk about what Intel XE and Evo, which you might also have heard of, are, and why they're important for Intel. Okay, so there's more than one variety of the Intel XE. We have four subfamilies, actually, um, and they're micro architectures of the new XE architecture. We have XE LP, which is their low powered and their integrated GPUs. These are what you and I are mostly familiar with and are found in laptops like the Razer Book 13, the Dell XPS 13, the MSI Prestige 14, and a bunch of others. Then we have XE HP, which is their high performance line, but it's aimed at data centers mostly. After that, we have XE HPC, which is their high performance computing line, which we'll basically see in supercomputers, and that's probably it. And lastly, we have XE HPG, or high performance gaming. And this is the one that everyone is kind of waiting to see to come out that has been rumored and even leaked a bit and seems squarely aimed at NVIDIA and AMD's popular gaming GPUs. All of these are based on the same new, technically 12th gen GPU architecture, but each has been subtly adjusted to meet the needs of its specific market. XELP being the only one currently available for consumers to purchase, and again, the only one that you've probably seen. Okay, now for some of the improvements over the last gen of GPUs from Intel. The new XELP architecture has 50% more EUs, which are execution units, and for performance, the more the better. A new transistor stack to drive frequencies about 30% higher, and it also makes it more scalable, which is how we're probably gonna see them using this as the basis for all their other GPUs that they're working on. Plus, there are other changes to the layout of the sub-slices, which are different sections of the chipset, different EU layouts, which we already talked about, etc. Bottom line though, we end up with an 80 to 90%, almost double graphics performance improvement over their last integrated GPU. Which by the way, was almost twice as powerful as the generation before that. I think we can all agree that Intel kinda has a fire lit under them right now and they're, they're trying to push it. And it's because of that, that this ultra light portable laptop that I mentioned already is able to edit my 4K 10-bit footage in DaVinci Resolve, which up until this point, I actually haven't been able to do on a laptop with integrated graphics. Speaking of, if you're not familiar, there are integrated GPUs and those share the space on the SOC with the CPU. And then there are dedicated, sometimes called discrete GPUs that have their own memory and usually their own power supply. Now normally Intel has really only focused on integrated GPUs, but now for the first time in over a decade, they've made a discrete one called XE Max. Now this is a second dedicated GPU with its own four gigs of memory and laptops with the XE Max branding, of which at the time of making this video, there's only really three right now. Now, there were a lot of people hoping that this was a dedicated gaming GPU, but as it turns out, it's still in that XE LP family. And that gaming GPU that everybody's waiting for is gonna be in that HPG family eventually. Now instead of being used for gaming, it, like the integrated XE GPU, is more for ultra portable productivity laptops. But it does have a couple of tricks. Now, firstly, it's found in laptops with XE integrated GPUs, but it doesn't replace it. Instead, it works in tandem with it. It also has a dedicated four gigs of LPDDR 
4X memory has a wide 128-bit memory bus, which you can think of as having like wider traffic lanes for accessing the memory, which helps speed things up. We have up to 16 more EUs for a total of 96 always for the XE Max versus between 80 to 96 EUs in the regular integrated XE and a slightly higher clock speed. The clever thing it can do though, because it's being used in conjunction with that iGPU and also the CPU, is what Intel calls Deep Link technology. Now this is a technology that allows it to dynamically share tasks across the two GPUs and the CPU in certain circumstances, which is actually pretty clever. So the other thing that we need to talk about that Intel just launched recently as well is their Evo certification. Now you might have seen this badge before on a bunch of new laptops coming out, but weren't sure what it actually meant. Well, in order for a laptop to have this on it, it has to get sent to Intel, and then they have to confirm that first, it's running an Intel 11th gen CPU plus Intel XE graphics. It has more than nine hours of battery life with FHD resolution. The bezels around the display are super thin. The computer can instantly wake from sleep in under a second. It supports fast charging, so it'll be able to get four hours of usage in under 30 minutes of charging. And finally, it needs to have Wi-Fi 6, which is the latest version of Wi-Fi that's just a lot more efficient, and Thunderbolt 4, which is cool because it allows you to transfer data super quickly from Thunderbolt storage, but also allows you to do things like plug in this external GPU housing to it and use the external desktop GPU of your choice to further improve the graphics power of the laptop as if it was built in. If you want to learn more about Intel Evo devices, check out the link in the description below. Okay, so what does all of this mean for the future of Intel chipsets? Well, a while back, I talked about Apple's M1 chipset and the fact that it's able to do what it's able to do because it is so optimized. Apple owns the CPU, the GPU, the OS, and they're even the OEM, the manufacturer of the laptop. Well, with Intel using this new, more scalable architecture, as well as the more powerful GPUs that are hopefully coming out with HPG, running on computers that already run their CPUs, they can optimize the battery and the performance a lot more. And then the fact that they have the Evo certification means that they can also make sure that the OEMs are doing their part as well. Honestly, I feel like it's gonna be pretty interesting, especially when those new HPG, more powerful GPUs come out to see what Intel is capable of doing with them. Also, this of course means more competition in this space, and that's always good for us, the consumers. There you guys, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. And if you like this video, please thumbs up or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also, check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to it, subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.